Okay, I want to share this. I'm going to do the 19th. This is from this book. I do not have copyrights to this book, YouTube. I don't even know if this is a copyrighted book. Um, but I am. It was copyright from 1925. So, October 19th. I'm going to read it because I started reading it and it seems pretty good. So, I just want to share it. Okay, the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant of the Creator went before them. Numbers 10.33 Yahuwah does give us impressions, but not that we should act on them as impressions. If the impression be from Yahuwah, he will himself give sufficient evidence to establish it beyond the possibility of a doubt. And we call those confirmations. And when something comes over and over and over again, year after year, it'd be foolish to say that's just a coincidence. And that has been happening in my life in a particular area. And boy, <laughs> he will definitely get his point across. How beautiful is the story of Jeremiah, of the impression that came to him respecting the purchase of the field of Anatoth. But Jeremiah did not act upon this impression until after the following day when his uncle's son came to him and brought him external evidence, external evidence by making a proposal for the purchase. Then Jeremiah said, I knew this was the word of Yahuwah. He waited until Yahuwah seconded the impression by a providence. A providence is what the um, older generations called a touch of God. Um, and him actually touching a situation, coming in sovereignly and touching it. He waited until Yahuwah seconded the impression by a providence, by a touch, and then he acted in full view of the open facts which could bring conviction unto others as well as to himself. Yahuwah, it could bring conviction unto others as well as to himself. Yahuwah wants us to act according to his mind. We are not to ignore the shepherd's personal voice. But like Paul and his companions at Troas, we are to listen to all the voices that speak and gather from all the circumstances as they did the full mind of the Creator. Where Yahuwah's finger points, there Yahuwah's hand will make the way. Do not say in thine heart what thou wilt or will not do, but wait upon Yahuwah until he makes known his way. So long as that way is hidden, it is clear that there is no need of action and that he accounts himself responsible for all the results of keeping thee where thou art. That is powerful. Do not say in thine heart well, what you will or will not do. I've been doing that with a particular situation in my life. I can't do this anymore, Abba. Crying my guts out on the floor. I can't go one more minute. And then he'll pick me up, brush me off, dust me off, pat me on the head and say, yes, you can. My strength will be strong in you when you are weak, and my joy is your strength. Do not lay in your heart what you will or will not, will not do, but wait upon Yahuwah until he makes known his way. So long as that way is hidden, it is clear and there is no need of action, and that's a good thing. When in doubt, don't. There's a difference between real faith and knowing that he spoke and pr presumption, and presumption is deadly. So long as that way is hidden, it is clear that there is no need of action and that he, sorry, that's my dog wanting to come in. He accounts himself responsible. He accounts himself responsible for all the results of keeping thee where you are. For God through ways we have not known will lead his own. I have cried out to him so many times. You have to keep me. I cannot keep myself. I can't keep myself on this path. I can't keep myself doing what you want me to do when every bone in my body is telling me to, to run. He is the one responsible, and I have asked him, keep me on the path, even when fear or something like that would, would try to take me over. He would keep me, and he has been faithful. Even when we can't be or we're weak, he is strong. So I wanted to share this today. I hope it blesses you. Shalom.